Do you feel back to John Wall that we know and like have seen? And do you feel like you got a big chip on your shoulder this year? Uh, A for sure, man. I have one that kept me positive whenever I felt like I was down. For me, I always believe I had a lot left. And uh, I feel like I don't get a lot of recognition for the type of player I am in this league. And I know how much hard work and dedication I put into the game. Yes, I feel like it's a chip on my shoulder because a lot of people think I'm done and thought I was written off. So you see this season. What's the longest haircut you've ever given us? Jesus. How long did how long that take? Uh, about an hour and a half. I did an hour and a half haircut before. Was it mad? That was mad. Was mad. Mad. Usually, usually, we would have a lot of breaks with mad, but you typically the, the hour and a half haircuts, you know, men like to use a lot of cosmetics like women nowadays. No, no, so but that is, a new, that is a thing. That's a thing now. Men are into cosmetics for sure. Like, 100%. But a lot of them are getting it from their wives or girlfriends or moms yeah. or whatever. It's definitely a different day. Or their most trusted source, their barbers. The yeah. most trusted their source, barbers, barbers. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of trusted sources, Brian, who you got stopping by the shop today, man? Oh, we got a hooper coming in. A hooper? Totally. Yeah, John Wall's pulling in. Yeah. <laughs> John Wall's yeah. <laughs> What's up, What's up, brother? So, so. How you like in L.A.? Loving it. Already. Great weather. Congrats, brother. Thank you, thank you. Feel good. You look good. Ready for the season to start? Can't wait. I was happy to see the schedule come out the other day. Was you happy? What, what did, did you circle in the games? Yeah, you know I circle one main game. Houston? Nope. Who? D.C. Oh, you were going back to D.C.? Going back to D.C. What, what made you circle D.C.? Kind of hard to say, man. Like, just a lot of chills. Uh, been there for 10 years, the team that drafted me. Damn, you was there for 10. That shit was Being the franchise guy and then getting traded from there, then uh, that was during the midst of COVID, you know what I mean? So I never had the opportunity to be back and play in front of fans. So hopefully I'll get that big stand ovation that I think I deserve. My ultimate goal is trying to bring a championship there. Like, everything I gave to that city, from playing through my injuries, uh, giving back to the community, that felt like a second home to me. The Houston experience was just crazy. Like, what the hell is going on down there? I couldn't believe it. Like, like they, they traded for you and didn't even want you there, it, really, right? It was interesting, because I think when they traded for me, I think they thought James was going to stay. And then when I got there, he wanted to leave. For me, though, I was just happy to be playing a game that I love again. You know what I mean, because I had missed the last two and a half years from my Achilles injury and my mom passing and stuff like that. So I was just happy to play basketball. So it was at the point where I wasn't supposed to play back to backs or nothing. I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm playing basketball. Like, yeah, no matter if y'all want me to or not, just let me hoop because yeah. I love the game. I love the John Wall style of playing. Like, it's exciting. Like, it's fun. It's, and when you <laughs> when you bring that personal style to what the Clippers have, how do you do you feel like you're going to unleash it right away? Are you going to fill your spots out? Or are we going to see that personal style that you bring? Bring to the game right uh, away. Thank you. Just know me, man. Like when I step between those four lines, it's just go get it. Like I'm not scared of nobody. I feel like you tie your shoes the same way I tie my shoes. And uh, just talking to those guys and talking to T. Lou, they said don't come in and try to fit in. Just be yourself. And John, anyone that knows you knows there's two things they say consistently about you. One, you're a good dude, and two, you love to hoop. What was that like, you? having to sit out that year? Yeah, it was a tough time, man. Cause like, it was like to the point where like, you know, some people don't tuck their pride when you have to be in a certain situation. I was like, well, if it's like I got to back up a certain guy or the new guy they just drafted that plays my position, I got to play that role, I'm fine with that. But uh, to not give me the opportunity to fight for my position when I just had a hell of a year last year. Did you travel with the team? Yeah, sometimes. And then to the point I was like, man, you know what? It's probably best for me to go back home and be with my kids so I can get on a regular workout schedule and hopefully I tried to get traded in February. When that didn't happen, I finally took a break to let my body get some rest. Speaking of your injury, long road to recovery, but what, how did you stay positive through all that and stay motivated? To be honest, I wasn't even at my best. You know? I mean, that was like my Mentally? Dark. Yeah, mentally, I got, oh, man, wow. that's when I like, even like, um, being mental is like, that's really like tough. You know what I mean? Like yeah. depression and all that type of stuff. Like I really understood what it was when I was going through that process. Up uh, to that point, had you ever thought about it or even understood it? Nah, I was fine. Like I knew like people have go through mental health and I knew it was like, it was a big thing. But like until you start hearing guys come out and talk about like uh, DeMar DeRozan, somebody I call like a brother, came out and talked about it and Kevin Love came out and talked about it. But my first year was kind of easy. You know what I mean? Like at first I had my surgery, then my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh wow. So that's, anybody knows me, that's like, that's my best friend. Somebody yeah. I talk to seven, eight times a day. Uh, so that really got hit hard on me. Then I had my first son. So that kind of kept me level-headed to a certain day. And I had three infections with my Achilles surgery. So nobody really knows that. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I had three infections. I almost had to cut my foot off. Like During the, you uh, had like a staph infection? Yeah, like it got bad. So yeah, like nobody I get really, really knew bad. that. 
You mean your kids got tore, you got it fixed, and you tore it again? So this one happened to tell you. Had a bone spur like three inches long, like a two. Ooh, that's painful. That I've been playing with for six or seven years. Wow. And it was in my Achilles, you know what I mean? So it was underneath, like this is my Achilles, it was underneath my Achilles. So they lifted my Achilles, took the bone spur out, and put my Achilles back. So basically it's already torn anyway, but and not you, And you played with this for six, seven seasons? Yeah, right. six, seven years. Oof. And it was a game in Cleveland. I remember Colin Sexton got the jump ball and dribbled it, and I took a step back, so it's over. Like, I have to have surgery. So, go back to that, like, um, yeah, I had that, and I woke up, it was like a Friday, I woke up there, like, well, you gotta get your Achilles repaired, because it's torn. So I woke back, turned around, had another surgery on Sunday, got that done, then I eventually got the affection to go away. Then uh, my mom ended up passing, so that was like a tough time for me, so, uh, you know, coming from work, a lot of people come from a tough background, we think we can get through anything on our own, we find ways to figure it out. And uh, to the point where I had to go get help, get a therapist, and have somebody yeah. to talk to, and that person, like, kind of, you know, Who like, encouraged you to go get the therapist, John? Uh, my assistant, just my assistant and people around me, uh, just talking to them, and they like, well, we could tell you're not really happy. Like, I feel like the devil was just fighting against me, and I couldn't beat him. Yeah. So I realized that like I needed to find some help. You still go I could. to therapy? You still yes, go to this day. Yeah, that's a lot to go through to stay positive. Commend you on that, by the way. But, uh, that's that's cool. For sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Hell yeah. Now, as I told you when you walked in, you look. Fucking great. For sure, man. I have a smile on my face. Like, I lost a lot of weight. Like, all that depression, all that. Do you feel back to John Wall that we know and, like, have seen? A. And B, do you feel like you got a big chip on your shoulder this year? Yeah, I'm back happy. I'm back having fun, man. I got a great group of people around me. Uh, the mother of my kids, my two kids, uh, my family, uh, the people that works for my team, they kept me level headed. Like, those are the ones that kept me positive whenever I felt like I was down and told me, like, you used to, like for me, I always believe I had a lot left. And uh, I feel like I don't get a lot of recognition for the type of player I am in this league, and it is what it is. But I know how much hard work and dedication I put into the game. And yes, for your second question, yes, I feel like it's a chip on my shoulder because a lot of people think I'm done and thought I was written off. So you see, you see. John, let me let me ask you: We, what year is this coming up for you? What season? Thirteen. What John Wall are we getting in in season thirteen? I think you're getting a more mature John Wall, somebody that's been through all the adversities, the ups and downs. Like I said, been at my highs, they've been at my lowest. And uh, knowing how easy the game can be taken away from you. And uh, been through what I've been through, I don't think a lot of people could have got through what I went through. And I think that's just a true testimony of how true I am to my dedication, uh, just being prideful in myself and knowing how much I have left in the tank. And uh, like you know me, like I said, I'm very competitive. Uh, I got two boys I do it for. Losing my mom, that's my more motivation. And then I listen to the critics. Like, I don't care what you say. You do said. listen. I love it. I like when people... I'm into it. I love yeah. it. Like, I sit there, listen to it, and I put it in my notes. Yeah. So when I see you at my game and you see me putting on the show, don't try to be my friend now. <laughs> well, that's the thing I think people don't may not understand. It's like, you're not just happy to be here. Like, you're a savage with your nose lines. Yeah. Like, you're coming, like, to prove... I'm coming from revenge. Like, yeah. I really, yeah. like... I'm trying to rip everybody's head off and put it on Is the side. Is there one specific critic from the last few years that you, like... You... Everybody. All of them. Everybody. Because, like... Like I said before, like, and I don't like really pay attention to a lot of stuff. But it's like only thing four guys that average average nineteen and nine for their career. I think it's Magic, uh, Isaiah Thomas, and I think Oscar Robertson. And I'm one of those four, but I never get talked about in the accolade. Like you ever look at like I'm one of the best two way guards when I did play. Only made one All NBA team, one All Defensive team. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and that's how you kind of like reputation costs people like their money of or costs your reputation of being into the Hall of Fame. Of course. So I think a lot, a lot of people recognize what I did when I'm done. But I'm still here to show people what I got left. You still, you, and you feel like you still got a lot more. A lot of left in the tank. John, thanks for coming on the shop, bro. Absolutely. Let's give a little cheers yeah. to the revenge story. The revenge story. Right here, John. We can't choose the left. One second. Thanks, John.